Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody. Brother Ronnie, Pastor Ronnie, <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Always lovely to have you with us, um, the, especially today on a Friday. Well, it's good to have any day, to be fair, but today is, is your day, brother. So come and share what the Lord has put in your heart for this morning. Amen. Thank you, Rami. What a blessing to see you all. Um, should we sing one song before we start? Yes. Is that okay? Yes, yes. If you don't know it, just close your eyes and listen to the lyrics and just enjoy the presence of the Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. For the river of your mercy. For the fountain of your grace, for the everlasting water flowing from the highest place, my soul is thirsty for you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. For the river of your mercy, for the fountain of your grace, for the everlasting water flowing from the highest place. My soul is thirsty for your presence, Spirit of God. And as I stand in adoration, refresh me, O Lord, fill me again, fill me again, lift your voice and say, fill me, Lord, fill me again. is thirsty for you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. For the river of your mercy, for the fountain of your grace, for the everlasting water, Flowing from the highest place And for the river of your mercy For the fountain of your grace For the everlasting water Flowing from the highest place Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. We are thirsty our souls are thirsty for you, Lord. Fill us today, Lord. And remove anything that doesn't come from you. And fill our hearts with your love, with your presence, with your love, with your peace. If anyone is listening to this message, Lord, and is experiencing anxiety, circumstances that are difficult or may seem impossible, Lord, we pray that as we enjoy your presence today, all the other things will disappear at the light at the marvelous light of your glory, Lord. Everything else will disappear. We set our eyes on you today and I 
and we open our hearts to receive from your word today, God. We declare that we are fertile soil to, to receive your word. Help us to put it into practice and help us, Lord, to love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our souls, with all our strength, and to love one another as you have loved us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Great to be with you today. Grab your Bibles, please. And we're going to share a very short devotional, but a powerful devotional. It's something that the Lord's been speaking to me uh, in the past few days. And I want you to take notes if you, if you can. And if not, just remember what the Lord's been declaring upon your life today. But uh, we're going to go to the book of Psalm, Psalm uh, 37, verse 4. I'm going to paste it in the chat room so that you can keep it there in your notes. And we're going to take this Bible verse as the foundation of everything we're going to say today. Because we're going to be talking about recovering our delight. Recovering our delight. And I'm going to read uh, Psalm 37. Hope you have it uh, ready there. It says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I want you to underline that word that says delight yourself in the Lord. You know, since the beginning of creation, God created humanity in a garden called Eden. Everybody say Eden so that your neighbors can hear that word. And that word means pleasure, means delight. So we were created to live in a constant atmosphere of delight, delighting in the presence of the Lord, delighting in His goodness, delighting in Him. I don't know what Rami's favorite dish is. I assume it's a Sri Lankan sort of rice. Rami, is that, is that right or no? No, no, no. English breakfast. What, what, what's your favorite dish, Rami? Always English, Rami. Always English, okay? English. <laughs> English bread, fish and chips. So, but there must be a dish that Rami really enjoys and he delights in eating that. He enjoys it. It's something you don't have to force Rami to eat that. And our relationship with the Lord was intended to be like that since the beginning of creation. He, we were created. We were placed in this garden called Eden, which means delight. And somehow along the way, that delight went missing. Somehow along the way, the delight was vanishing. And the Lord keeps reminding us throughout the scriptures about recovering our delight. Relationships that need to go back into that delight. Couples that need to go back into that relationship that is delighting with one another. Your service in church, your service coming into a, a Bible group like this should be a delight. Serving God and serving others to be a delight. And how do we recover that? Well, we're going to talk about that because many Christians, as the Bible says, in the latter days, they will grow cold in delighting in the Lord. They will grow cold in loving others. And even the book of Revelations talk about this. And, and it says, I know your hard work. I know all the things that you've been doing, but I got something against you. And it's that you've been losing your first love. You've been lo losing that delight. You're not delight. You're doing things, but you're not delighting in what you're doing. You're serving. You're investing a lot of time, energy, effort, but you're not delighting in what you're doing. And God is saying to us today, recover that delight. And Psalm 37 says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart." The Bible continuously talks about recovering our delight and focusing on delighting ourselves in the Lord. And I want you to go to the book of Luke chapter 10. I'm going to put it here. Luke chapter 10. I'm going to read from verse 38. Luke chapter 10 from verse 38 onwards. Famous story. Many of you know it. Luke chapter 10 verse 38. And I'm going to read it. This is the a very standard version. Luke chapter 10, verse 38. 
at the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home, home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. And Martha has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. You see, in the context of this story, uh, a leader of the community asked Jesus uh, how to really live and what the eternal life and the neighbor and love means and all that. And this is a famous story of the Good Samaritan. It is in the context of this story. And Jesus assured this man that we need to love God with all our hearts and our neighbors are, as ourselves. And this story is there with a purpose because the context is, is talking about loving God in the first place and then doing the other things, seeking the kingdom of God first and then the rest will come as a consequence. So you see, and then we see this story here of someone that was enjoying and delighting in the Lord and some other person that was filled with anxiety and the occupations of this world, which we're going to talk about them today. You see, Martha, she thought of making sure that everything was perfect for the dinner, that everything was ready, that they will eat together and, and they will have a wonderful time doing that. And, and that was her priority. But Mary, she just wanted Jesus. She just wanted to sit right next to Jesus, listen to him. He, she was focusing on him and on him alone. Mary loved everything about Jesus. She loved hearing him talk. She loved listening to the sermon. Mary's like that type of person that just focuses on the message, listens to the word of God, sits right next to Jesus in worship, in adoration. She loved talking to him. She even loved just sitting on the floor next to his feet, hanging out with Jesus. What Martha was doing was important too. I mean, uh, some, someone had to make dinner. But the problem was that she, she got caught up in all the stuff that she thought needed to be done and missed the point of what she was doing in the first place. And the first thing that she had to be focusing on was to spend time with Jesus. Jesus wants our wholehearted adoration more than he wants our service. He came to set us free from the burdens that tells us that what we do defines who we are. But that's not true, you know, because he loves you because of who you are. He loved you even before you did anything in this world. He loved you even before you made a mistake. He loved you even before you were created. And Jesus Christ came to give you rest. Come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, the Bible says, and I will give you rest, delight, peace, joy. Now, overcoming business, business means letting go of the effort that it takes to try to impress all the people instead of focusing on the freedom that Jesus Christ gives us. And, and Jesus wants us to serve him because we love him so much that we will do anything for him. But he doesn't want our busy, overwhelmed schedules. He wants our love and adoration. He wants a true relationship with him. And this only grows deeper and deeper as we rest in him. You see Mary sitting beside Jesus at his feet. Mar Martha stands on the other side and, and, and she starts saying, hey, hey, won't you tell her that she should come and just come and help me and, and do this and do that. And, and that's okay, you know. Mary lets Jesus hear her prayer requests and her concerns and things and in verse 45 41 that word that talks about service is very used in, in in the book of Luke it's used many times in the book of Luke and and he talks about service he talks about being like an usher but the problem here that that service 
is marked by distractions and worry. And that is, is bringing a conflict between the real growth and the expression of authentic faith. You see, it's like saying you don't care. She's saying you don't care about my style of doing things. You don't care about my things. You don't care about me. And, and her, her, her focus is just about herself and not on Jesus himself. And she begins to feel anxious about the possibility of a late dinner or a simple dinner or even no dinner. And this is also related to the word used to of, of the Samaritans and the innkeeper in the previous chapter, in the previous verses, about the actions of caring for that injured man. You see, Martha's work is certainly important. Everything you do is important before God. And God is not saying here, oh, you don't have to do anything. You just have to do this. No, no, no. He, he's just putting all the priorities in the right place. And that's what God is saying to us today. We just need to put our priorities first. No, don't you ever start a day without sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to his voice and praying and spending time listening to his voice. And then... Go and do everything you have to do. We all have things to do in this world and they are amazing. We can worship God and we can serve God through them. The problem is that when we start getting anxious, when we start getting so busy that our focus begins to change and anxiety is not healthy, we should experience peace and joy in our service. And everything we do when we're serving, it's got to be a healthy Delight. Delight yourself in the Lord. But have you noticed that when, when you don't start your day praying or you don't start your day reading the Bible and going deeper in the Word of God, when you don't start listening to the voice of God, it seems like your efforts your, and things just are super different to all the, all the days in your life. And I've experienced that in my life when I try to, <clears throat> excuse me, when I get so anxious about many things and I don't spend time in the presence of God because I'm busy doing things about gutters in the building, doing, about, doing things about the fire alarms, risk assessments, this and that, meetings, leadership meetings, all things. And then all that begins to drain the main purpose. If we are not careful, we are going to lose our delight. And the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. Since the beginning, we were created to be in Eden, which means delight, pleasure. But many people are serving without that delight. Many people walk into churches, church buildings and they don't delight. They're just there because of their routine, because they're on a rota. Discontent. Many times it's because just like Martha, we are comparing ourselves with others. And comparison only brings anxiety and discontent. Don't you ever compare yourself to others. Focus on Jesus. Sit down next to him. Because comparison is a trickster. Because he will never tell you the full story. We can look at someone else's life. And nowadays with all the social media, we will look at someone else's Facebook page, Instagram. Uh, and we only catch a snapshot. And it's just like like a smiling Christmas photo that never hints that the pre-post argument of the toddler screaming right next to it. We miss the rest of the story. So don't compare yourself. It will bring anxiety into your life. You know what many people are losing the delight nowadays? Because they're comparing with other people. They're comparing to others. And God is saying to you today, focus on me. Delight yourself in me. Set your eyes on me the author and the finisher of your faith. Comparison only brings anxiety. And, and, and Martha was comparing herself with Mary. Stop comparing yourself. You are unique in the way that God made you. And God is going to use you. God is going to use your gifts and abilities, your service, just like you are. And He's going to be glorified in your life and through your life. But first things come first. Listen to God first. And then go and do 
what you've been called to do. Don't compare yourself to others just like Martha was doing it. That would, be, that, that would just bring anxiety into your life, into your ministry. Don't compare numbers. Don't compare this. Don't compare, compare material things and all that. That will only bring anxiety. Focus on listening to God and delighting yourself in God. You see, you can see happy smiles on social media. Or the beautifully perfect children or the bigger, nicer house. And then this content begins to just grow in your, in your mind, in your heart. And Martha was doing exactly that. Losing her delight. Losing that focus. And then if you want to delight yourself in the Lord, apart from not comparing yourself to others, you have to pray a lot. You have to say things to Jesus. You see, she said it to Jesus. Lord, this is how I feel. These are my worries. These are my anxieties about many things. And you can come before God and God can take all that because he understands what you're experiencing today. So open your heart to Jesus. One of the ways for you to recover the delight, as the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. If you've been losing your delight, if you've been losing your focus, if you've been serving and you've been on that road, if you've been coming to these sort of meetings, but you've been losing the delight, God is saying to you, say to me, open your heart to me and say, God, This is how I feel. And with that poorness of of spirit, you can come and say, Lord, these are my worries. These are my anxieties. This is my life being pulled in too many directions today. We don't live by bread alone, the Bible says. Dinner can be a a little, uh, dinner can come a little later or a little burnt, just like the way I cook. But Jesus doesn't need an elaborate multi-course feast. Everything doesn't have to be just quite perfect in your, in your own eyes. When is enough enough? And, and, and yet at the same time, we just need to say, Lord, this is how I feel. And he's your perfect friend, your brother. Approachable, loving, and he's eager to listen to you today. Martha was so anxious about doing what she had trouble, he, what, she, what she was trying to do, that she was having trouble listening to the voice of God. And that is the problem. You will start losing your delight in the Lord when whatever you're doing is making you so anxious that you start having trouble listening to the voice of God. And this word is for every single person that is listening to that, including myself. Oh, the guitar has to be in tune. There's the microphone, this and that. Those things are good, but when we focus on God first, when we set our priorities first, there is a time to go and do, and there is a time to sit and listen. And today is a time for you to sit and listen. Can we help people understand the importance importance of this in our local churches, in our committee meetings? Now, sometimes we just need to sit down and listen to the voice of God and then we'll be able to go and do the other things. Let's sit down at the feet of Jesus first and then we're going to be empowered to go and do the service in the kitchen, in the world, in our workplaces. God is speaking into someone's life today because the path to the light As the Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord. The path to the light begins with one thing. And after Martha says her piece, uh, I mean, Jesus offers this path to the light. This path to recover the delight. And this is the secret that God wants to release again and to remind us of today. Jesus tells her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. Just put your name there. Ronnie, Ronnie, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. Which will not be taken away from her. Stop trying to make people be like. And to do what you're trying to do. And we Christians, sometimes we try to force people to just do what what we're doing. We're called to be different. Every single one of us is different. 
Just focus on what God has said to you. And then God will continue to work in other people's lives. You don't force people to do things. It's the Holy Spirit's job to do that. But it is your job to make sure that they know what the priorities are. That God comes first. Seek ye the kingdom of God first. And then the rest will come. And Jesus reminded Martha. And he's reminding you today. What to be concerned with. Where the focus and what should take the front row in our seats. The front row in our brains. The front row in your heart. You know, you know what should be taking the first row in your brain, in your seat, in your heart? It's the relationship you have with Jesus Christ. The relationship with Him. For the nations and the world strive after all these things, the Bible says. And your Father knows what they need, what you need. Instead, the Bible says, strive for His kingdom. And these things will be given to you as well. They will come. You know, the times when I've been the, the less efficient in God's ministry has been when I've been trying to do things in my own strength. But you know what? The times where I've been more effective in God's kingdom, the times where I've been more effective in doing what God has called me to do has been the times when I just sit and listen to what God has to say and then I'll go and do the things. But the problem with many Christians nowadays, the problem with many of us today is that we try to do things fulfilling our own agendas, our own mini empires, our own mini schedules. And then we try to ask God to come and bless our own plans where it should be the opposite. We need to sit down and listen to God first. And then as we hear his instructions, we go to the kitchen and we start serving. And we know that it will be well with us because his word has declared what we should be doing. But you know how many, how many Christians are struggling with lack of delight, losing their strength, losing their love for the Lord and for one another. They get grumpy very easily. They start comparing with one another, competing with one another. You know why? It's because we don't sit down to listen to the voice of God first. And then we can do and do, go and do the things that God has asked us to do. Martha was overly occupied and too busy. But Mary sat down at Jesus' feet and listened to what he had to say. And Martha was distracted with much serving. But Mary was thankful. Jesus was there. Are you thankful that Jesus is here with you today? Are you determined not to miss the beauty of the present moment? Are you determined not to miss this moment in the presence of God? And Jesus said that Mary made the better choice than Martha did. Because you know what? One minute in the presence of the Lord is better than 10,000 years of human effort. Human effort is amazing and we can use it and we're going to use it and we'll continue to use it. But I'm not going to use it before putting my priorities first. Listening to his voice first. Delighting myself in his presence and then the other things will come. Jesus did not tell Martha not to work. God is not saying to you, you to stop doing what you're doing and this and that. No, no, no. He told her not to be frustrated and have a bad attitude while she was working. She told her not to have a bad attitude. Jesus wants us to do the work and to work hard. But he also wants us to be wise enough to realize when we should stop all active activism. And do not miss the miracle of the moment. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? What is the Holy Spirit saying to you today? Recover your delight in His presence. Recover your delight in His, in his presence. And I'm going to repeat this into you because I remember when I was, uh, we were doing some outreach programs in the area here in Barnet, in, in North London. And I remember just pouring out a lot of time and energy and doing things and visiting places. And then all of a sudden, this story of Martha and Mary came into my heart. And I just went on my knees and said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Forgive me for trying to do things in my own strength. Instead of doing that, I'm going to sit down at your feet. I'm going to go on my knees and say, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. 
my resources are not enough to fulfill the mission here, but what do you want me to do? And I just went on my knees. And after I went on my knees, I started seeing the results of everything just flowing. After delighting myself in the Lord, all the desires of my heart were overwhelmingly surpassed by the blessings of God in that ministry area. Everything started flowing and growing. And even in difficult times, the Lord was there because His Word was the center of it all. Would you close your eyes at where you are and say, God, I don't want to lose my delight today. I've been so anxious and stressed about things. Would you close your eyes and say, Lord, all those things are important. All those documents, they're important. All those appointments, all the things in my diary, they're important, God. But you have reminded me today that you are the most important person of them all. And that if I don't have you, nothing else will flow, God. But if I have you as the center of my life, everything, everything else will be fulfilled in my life, Lord. Help me to choose what is better today, God. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me to choose what is better today. And these moments that I'm spending with you today, Lord, I pray that they will have a massive impact in my relationships with others. Many of you have had really bad relationship with others and it's because you've been losing your delight. It's time for you to delight again in that relationship. Your busyness has been making you so anxious that that's affecting your relationship with your wife, with your partner, with your friends. You get grumpy very easily, just like Martha. And it's because you've been overwhelmed by schedules and things. And they're not bad in itself. It's just that you've been losing your focus. He, he wants your adoration today. He wants a relationship with you today. And that will only grow deeper as you rest in the Lord today. Delight yourself in the Lord. And sit at His feet today. Sit at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, I'm thirsty for more of you. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands and I'm going to pray against all anxiety. And in the name of Jesus, if you have friends or relatives that are so anxious and God is going to use you to bring peace and delight in the, into their lives, into their hearts. I pray that you will experience the peace and the joy that comes by serving God with the right heart, with the right attitude, with the right priorities put in place. And I pray right now, if you've been comparing yourself, just like Martha was comparing herself to others, I pray today that you will stop comparing yourself to others. Because you are unique, you are beautiful just like you are, and God will use you with your gifts and abilities just like you are. But just sit at the feet of Jesus today in prayer. And don't be deceived by comparison. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you because of what you have given to me. Thank you for, the, for this opportunity, Lord. And just like Martha today, just say it to Jesus. Jesus wants to hear your concerns today. He wants to hear about your anxieties. And he, he wants to know about the things you're criticizing in the secret place. The things you've been thinking of. And Jesus is saying to you, you know what, dinner can be late or a little burnt. Because that, that comes in a second place. And we're not striving for mediocrity or, or seeking just to get by. No, 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 we're not saying that. We, we, we're going to do things with excellence. We're going to serve with excellence. We, we, we're going to serve day after day, hour after hour. But Lord, let's not forgive. Let us not forget, Lord, what the priorities are. So we cast any anxiety out of your life today. And I pray that you're going to experience a path to delight that will begin by just sitting in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Every morning, you're going to remember this word and you're going to wake up saying, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to 
blessed today? How do you want me to speak today? Start your day just like Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus. Finish your day whenever you have the opportunity. Use and recover the path, the path to the light that comes with a relationship with Him. It's time to work. It's time to do things, yes. But don't do that before sitting at the feet of Jesus. Any frustration goes out of your life today. And I can feel the peace of God overwhelming your heart today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I can feel the presence of God casting all anxiety out of your life. And you will experience the fruits of being in the presence of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. For the river of your mercy, for the fountain of your grace, for the everlasting water flowing from the highest place. And notice that Jesus. Jesus didn't tell her off. Jesus, Jesus didn't criticize the way he was, she was serving. Jesus just set the priorities right at that moment. So I pray that today you will recover your delights in everything you do in service. With your children, you're going to recover that delight. With your friends you will recover that delight with your partner with your wife you will enjoy once again dinners with her conversations with her and you will put your phone apart and you will just recover that delight God is saying to you recover that delight go back to Eden Eden means delight and God created you to enjoy that pleasure You will enjoy moments of prayer and intimacy with God like never before. Thank you, God. We are thirsty for more of you. Feel us as we lift our voices and our hands today, God. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. My soul is thirsty for you, Lord. For the river of your mercy, for the fountain of your grace, for the everlasting water flowing from the highest place. Over to you, Rami, so that you can pray for us. Blessings we receive from this precious ministry. The blessings we receive through Pastor Ronnie. And we ask that you pour your blessings into his life and the lives of his family and into the lives of Rami, Shanti and Luca. Thank you for loving us. And may we show this love to others as we go out for the day. Thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, blessed Elohim. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us You came from heaven to earth To show the way From the earth to the cross My debt to pay From the cross to the grave From the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high 
I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My death to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name.